If I were to tell you that Iraq had a space program during Saddam Hussein's rule, you'd probably think two things. Oh, the Babylon gun. Or, ah, no, those are WMDs. You're, you're kind of right, but you're also you know, kind of wrong. Saddam Hussein was pursuing spaceflight, and he even did have a rocket, Al Abed, which we're talking about today. But first, a, a few notes. Yeah, we'll talk about 2003 at the end. We kind of have to. It's Iraq. And uh, the other one, I don't speak Arabic. Sorry. The year 1988 marked a turning point for Iraq. After seven years of fighting Iran, the Iran-Iraq war had come to a close because Iran sued them for peace. We're not going to discuss this war, but suffice it to say, go read about it. It's an interesting one to study. Iran-Iraq was, interestingly, the first war to have both sides fire ballistic missiles at each other, especially during a period known as the War of the Cities. One side would fire a scud at a city, and the other would retaliate. The funny part was that the Iranians could hit Baghdad, while the Iraqis couldn't hit Tehran. Saddam obviously wanted longer-range missiles, so he got the help of a few figures, notably Jerry Bull and the Space Research Corporation. They would, of course, be working on the Babylon gun, but they were also working on their own derivatives of Scud B. What's a Scud B, you ask? Scud is the NATO designation of a family of short-range ballistic missiles produced by the Soviet Union in the 1950s and 60s. Scud A, also known as R-11 Zemlya, sucked. We're not talking about it. Scud B, R-17 Elbrus, is the focus of today. Scud B is 11.2 meters tall, 0.88 meters in diameter, and can carry a 985 kilogram warhead 300 kilometers. The engine runs on a nice hypergolic mix of AK-27 and TM-185. AK-27 is a mix of an inhibited red fuming nitric acid, dinitrogen tetroxide, water, and an inhibitor to keep the tanks from corroding. TM-185 is a special mix of kerosene that's densified and won't crystallize. Its gross liftoff weight is 5.9 metric tons, and it contains 3.54 metric tons of propellant. The engine is pump-driven, with a sea level thrust of 132.1 kilonewtons, and a sea level specific impulse of 232.9 seconds. In vacuum, it's 146.3 kilonewtons and 257.9 seconds. Steering is done through jet vanes like on V2 for the 65 second burn. Yeah, Scud's primitive. But, like everyone still uses it. Uh, most recent use I can think of was back in October 2024, when Iran fired some at Israel. Iraq would pursue three Scud derivatives in 1988, Al-Hussein, Al-Hijara, and Al-Abbas. Al-Hussein and Al-Hijara appear to be the same vehicle, a one-meter stretched Scud B airframe, only differentiated by the guidance package. At least that's what it looks like. Al-Abbas is a two-meter stretched Scud B airframe. Around this time, Iraq produced two test satellites weighing 75 kilograms each, set to be launched as a rideshare on an Ariane launch, until France remembered that Saddam Hussein was a crazy dictator. So they said no. Iraq then decided to build their own launch vehicle for Al-Tair, that's the satellite's name. Space Research Corporation was tasked with designing a launch vehicle for Al-Tair. Since Iraq wasn't in the position for a full-fledged development program, they settled on an easy solution, use Scud as the basis for the launch vehicle, especially Al Abbas. There are a few variants of this rocket studied, but not much documentation of them. SRC studied a three-stage launcher made from five to seven Al Abbases on the first stage, a second stage that's 1.25 meters in diameter, and a solid third. That 1.25 meter second stage was another rocket called Al Karif, which was nominally for testing the upper stages separately or it was a nuclear weapons delivery vehicle. This is because we know about S-13, a nuclear-tipped missile started in 1987 that was 1.25 meters in diameter and could carry 2 tons, 650 kilometers. Yeah. The design that was settled on was five scuds on the first stage, the 1.25 meter second stage, and a solid third. We know this works because Altair could fit in it. Al Abid was designed to launch 100 to 300 kilograms to a 200 to 500 kilometer orbit. Here's the 7 Scud variant, because it looks cool. Another set of consultants did arrive at an alternative design that there's no documentation of, so we can ignore it. 
Now, documentation exists of this abominable variant of Al Abed. We know it wouldn't work because Al Tair couldn't have fit in it. More documentation has this hammerhead fairing, which was probably rejected in favor of the 1.25 meter diameter third stage. Performance improvements to Scud included changing the fuel from TM185 to a mixture of DETA and UDMH and working on an extended nozzle for the second stage Scud. This is the only image of it that exists because it melted during ground testing. Within six months, a flight test was ready. No, don't get too excited. It was primarily a test of the first stage cluster with a dummy Scud B on the second stage and a mock-up third stage. You can tell because the payload fairing isn't big enough for Altair. This launch would take place in Al Anbar, about 230 kilometers southwest of Baghdad. On December 5th, 1989, the first Al Abu would launch and fly for about 45 seconds before failing. There are two explanations for this failure. The stage separation bolts fired prematurely, or aerodynamic forces snapped the inner stage apart. Oh, and this is the only footage that exists. Isn't it wonderful? Not much else would happen with this program that we know of. Jerry Bull would be assassinated in March 1990, Iraq would invade Kuwait in August, and then be kicked out during Desert Storm in early 1991. Iraq does continue research on orbital launch vehicles during the 1990s, but we don't know much about what was going on during that time. Would Al Abbott have worked? Technically? Sure. Scud works, and it's likely that Iraq would have gotten a wider Scud derivative to work as the second stage. It's within reason to assume that a solid third stage could have been developed. Guidance is their main issue, as is getting the program funded to completion, or at least completing it. Iran and North Korea have developed their own Scud-based orbital launchers in the 1990s and 2000s, so I see no reason that Iraq couldn't technically do the same. How about practically and politically? <laughs> no! Duh! Within a year of Al Abid's only flight, Iraq invades Kuwait and loses. Badly. The 1990s aren't a good time for the country either. Just read about it. And in 2003, the United States would invade under the pretense of Saddam having WMDs. Guess what Al Abid would be considered under that circumstance? Orbital launcher or ICBM to carry WMDs? This thing is doomed. Honestly? Aside from the geopolitical reality, Al Abbott is an interesting design for its use of available rocket parts. It's a smart and practical solution. Oh, and don't worry, I hear Altair is safe in Baghdad. S somewhere. Al Abbott! That's a rocket you know!